Coming up, if you're new to Azure, an existing Azure user, and just want to learn more, I'll introduce you to the Azure Quick Start Center. Azure Quick Start Center is the fastest way to explore and onboard yourself to Azure. I'll show you how it can help with in-the-moment pragmatic guidance and steps that you can accomplish all in one flow by taking you to the exact plate in Azure to perform a specific action, and how Azure Quick Start Center can help you plan and kick off your VM or data migrations with our new migration guide. To find Azure Quick Start Center, you can access it under the All Services menu under the General category, and you can pin it to your left navigation by clicking on the star. You can also find it in Global Search by typing in Quick Start, and then when you arrive, you can pin it to your dashboard so you can find it when you come back to the portal. From here, you're presented with two main options. Setup guides, which guides you through what's needed to set up your environment for future success and help you plan to take steps towards Azure migration and start a project, which allows you to learn as you build new workloads in Azure and quickly identify which service is best for your project. Let's dive into starting a new project. Here, I'm presented with five options I might want to choose from. These represent some of our core Azure scenarios that you might want to get started with if you're a new user. In this case, I want to create a web app, so I click on that. I can go directly to the Create a Web App by clicking any of these Create buttons for each, or I can learn more before I commit to creating a resource. I'll select the first option, Build and Host a Web App with Azure Web Apps. And as you can see, this gives me a quick view of what this Azure service is, why I need to use it, a sample reference architecture, and prerequisites. It even allows me to explore costs and see what I can get for free if I'm a free account customer. Next, by selecting Create, this takes me directly to the Create form to build my resource. By filling in my subscription information, the name of my web app, and some additional details, I can create my first web app in Azure. Similarly, if you're an IT administrator or cloud architect, you can get a guided and actionable experience for setting up your Azure environment. On the left navigation, you'll see a breakdown of the key items that you need to consider that we guide you on as you set up your Azure environment. These are structured steps for how to organize your resources so that way you can understand the hierarchy in which your resources are organized and take actions like creating your own resource group by clicking on this button, which takes you directly to the resource group create form. Then, how to manage access for your users and resources gives you an overview of role-based access controls, or RBAC, so that you can manage the appropriate level of access for users in your organization. For example, clicking here takes you directly to the resource group blade, so that way you can set up RBAC for your resources. By clicking on a specific resource group, going to access controls, and then going to role assignments, you can see the scope of what users or groups in your organization have access to. Then, managing costs helps you to understand the cost management strategies and tools in the Azure portal you can use for your Azure subscription. For example, by clicking on cost management and billing, you'll get to an overview page of all of your subscriptions. You can manage costs for your particular subscription by going to cost management, and then when you select cost analysis, you can see your actual costs forecasted costs, and how you're tracking against your budget. Equally, within governance, security, and compliance, we showcase the robust tools that Azure offers to set up the operational guardrails for your organization. For example, you can set up Azure policy to enforce rules on your resources, like restricting to certain SKUs or regions to enforce data sovereignty. By clicking on Assign a Policy, it takes you to the Azure Policy Blade to review your overall resource compliance. And if you don't have any policy set up, you can click on Getting Started and assign a policy. Lastly, under Monitoring, Reporting, we show you how you can access complementary tools like Azure Monitor, Service Health, Advisor, and also Security Center, which allows you to explore your security dashboard to view your security score, recommendations, and more. Overall, you get step-by-step -step guidance on how to set up your Azure environment with Microsoft's recommended best practices. And the best part is you can do this all in one flow. We've also just added specific guidance on how to migrate to Azure. This gives you information on how to assess your current environment, prepare for migration, and make the shift to Azure. This is all built within the Azure portal and was developed with our fast track for Azure engineers who work with customers daily. 
It's designed to make you aware of key migration steps to help you understand which applications to migrate, how to manage your costs through the process, as well as how to secure your newly migrated resources in Azure, amongst other tools and resources available to you. For example, under prerequisites, we give you an overview of common migration reasons, as well as a planning checklist for your migration, from planning all the way through to post-migration. And then we make you aware of the different migration options that you can take, along with the tools available to you in accordance with the cloud adoption framework. You can follow our decision tree to understand what migration tools may be useful to you. Next, assessing your digital estate introduces you to the Azure Migrate tool. You can click on Create a Migration Project, which brings you to Azure Migrate. Here, you're given a choice of which resources you want to assess for migration. We'll pick virtual machines. You can get started by picking one of the various first and third party out of the box assessment tools that use agentless assessment, so you don't need to install anything on your VMs to run the assessment. After you've gone through this, you'll be able to see which VMs are suitable for migration. From there, you can move on to the actual migration, where we recommend the latest Azure Migrate capabilities to assist your migration. And in a similar way, if you have databases, we provide guidance for using the Azure Database Migration Service. Beyond resource suitability for migration, we give you the important guideline information on timelines and cost management, where you can see monthly cost estimates for compute and storage and storage by storage type. So that was an overview of the Azure Quick Start Center. It's available to everyone, whether you are starting out on your free trial, want to improve your knowledge on how to use Azure, or exploring more advanced scenarios such as governance and migration. The content on the Azure Quick Start Center is updated on a regular basis to ensure you have the most up-to-date information. And one more thing, you can also access online courses offered by Microsoft directly from the Quick Start Center. Azure Quick Start Center is available to all Azure customers today. Try it for yourself and let us know your feedback on improvements and additional guidance you'd like to see at the link below. Thanks for watching.